During this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to plot a basic graph using Excel. I ought to stress the word basic, so if you are proficient with Excel already, you might find this a little bit elementary and prefer to watch one of my more advanced videos, um, which you can find on YouTube. Um, the graph I'm going to plot is all to do with UK electricity production and the amount of electricity produced from various resources. If you are interested in plotting similar graphs yourself, you can get this information from the gov.uk website. The easiest way to find it is actually just to do a search on Google for Historical Electricity Data UK and you should have no difficulty then getting to this particular page. The spreadsheet when you open it up is a little bit more complicated than what I've got. Um, I've actually stripped out a lot of the extra information, tidied it up a little bit um, just by deleting various rows as you can see. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to plot a series of graphs all, all on the same graph showing how the amount of electricity produced from coal, oil, gas, nuclear and then all of the others such as hydro, wind etc um, has changed in the years between 1920 and 2011. Now the first thing I'm going to have to do is just to calculate a total for all of the other kind of fuels. You'll notice that we've got columns here for coal, oil, etc. But I've got a series of columns for the other ones. So I need to do a simple calculation. Now to do this, I've created an extra column called Other. And the calculation that I'm going to enter, you can view it as a type it just by looking in this box here, um, simply says that I want this, that box to be equal to the sum of the others. Now there's several ways you can do this, but perhaps the easiest way is to click on the first cell, then to type plus, click on the second cell, oops wrong one, so it needs to be that one, plus this, and finally plus that, and when I click enter you'll notice it's done the calculation. One thing to be a little bit aware of at the moment is if you don't make this column big enough, sometimes you just get a line of hashes like that. And that simply says there's not enough room to display the data. So if you make the column wider, it will display the data in its entirety. Another thing that you can do at this stage is you will notice that this is giving a lot of decimal places, whereas in all of the other rows, all of the figures are only given to two decimal places. Now, one way in which you can make this one consistent with the others is to click on the L at the top of the row, which highlights all of the row. And now, if I do a right click, I can format cells. There are other ways of doing this as well, but the right click is probably the easiest, which brings up this box. What I'm going to do is I'm going to tell it that the contents of those boxes are numbers, and you will see that here, it says it's going to display the numbers to two decimal places. So I'm going to leave it at that and click OK. And now my number is also displayed to two decimal places. Now, I want the same formula to exist in all of the cells below the one I've just filled in. I could, I suppose, type the same formula in time and time again, but doing so would be very time consuming, especially because I've got 91 rows of data in this table. So what I'm going to do, I've just clicked on that cell, and you'll notice it's surrounded by a little blue box. Um, if I hover my mouse over the bottom right corner, there's a tiny little um, square blob there, and my mouse turns to a black cross. If I now click and hold the mouse key down, I can now drag this box downwards, and you'll see what that does in a moment. So I'm going to drag it all the way down to the bottom of my table, there, and then let go. And what you'll notice is that Excel has filled in all of those rows for me automatically. So I'm now ready to start plotting. Now, one thing I failed to say earlier on, which I ought to mention right now, is which version of Excel I'm using. I'm using Excel 2011 for Mac, but a lot of the things that I'm demonstrating in this tutorial apply to most other versions of Excel. For example, Excel 2008 for, for Windows works on the same principles as well. Now, in order to plot my graph, what I need to do is I need to highlight the data. The easiest way to do that is to click, once again, at the top of the columns such as column A, which highlights all the data in that column. Now, in order to select multiple columns, what I'm going to do is I'm going to press and hold on a Mac the Command button, but if you're on a PC, then you should be holding the Control button instead. So I press the 
command button in this case or the control button on the PC. I keep it held and now I just click at the top of the other columns. Finally, the other column over here, like that, and I'm ready to go. Now, to display my graph, if you're on a Mac, you'll notice that there is a little charts option there that brings up the charts ribbon. If you're on a PC, you need to go to the insert tab instead. Select insert, and then there is an option for a graph. In this particular case, there are a variety of graphs you can plot. I want to plot the scatter graph like this. Now, when you plot a, plot a scatter graph, a scatter graph is a way of plotting one quantity on your y-axis against a different quantity on your x-axis. And the way this graph works is that the left-hand most of all of your columns is always the thing that is going to be on the x-axis. There are ways of changing this, but to be frank, doing so can get a bit fiddly, especially if you're not very proficient at Excel. So I would always enter data in such a way that your left-hand most column is the one you want to go on the x-axis. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select one of these graphs. Usually, I would choose a marked scatter graph, which is the most appropriate for my subject, physics. But actually, on this occasion, I'm going to do something which a lot of physicists now are really going to frown and scowl at. I'm going to actually connect the points in a dot-to-dot -dot fashion. Um, we don't normally do this, but the reason I'm doing it is it will just lead to a clearer graph on this particular occasion. But usually, physicists would tell you it's an absolute no-no. If I click that, my graph now appears. Now, at present, this graph is a little bit on the small side. I'm going to move the graph. Now, the easiest way to do this, once again, is to right-click on the graph. When you do that, you'll bring up this menu, and I'm going to move the chart, and I'm going to move it to a new sheet. Now, doing this will display it as full page and make it much easier to um, format the graph. Now, you'll notice whatever version of Word you're in that at the top, if you've got the ribbon, you will, you'll have a series of different options. Here I've got something called Chart Layout and something called Format. And on, on the PC version, it's not too different. And this allows me just to alter the format of the graph. If I select Chart Layout, what I can now do is I can add labels on the X and also the Y axis, like that. I can also add extra grid lines. I'm just going to add major grid lines on this occasion. Um, I can also add a chart title at the top, like so, and now it's just a case of altering the titles of these. I'm not going to alter them all, but if, bear with me, for some reason, here we go, it's a bit better. What I can now do is I can delete that title at the bottom and type in what I want. So I'm going to have the title year at the bottom, and it's just a case of doing something similar with the y-axis and also the title at the top. One final thing that I'm going to do is you will notice on my x-axis that Excel has automatically chosen the scale. It's gone from 1900 up to 2020. Now, to be honest, I don't have any data before 1920, so there's absolutely no point whatsoever in showing this first section of the graph. A couple of ways of altering this, one of which is to click on axes at the top to go to horizontal scale and then axis options. But another way of doing it is if you right-click somewhere usually on the axis, you will bring up a little menu and you can format the axis. Now when you do that, you should get a box which looks similar to this. I'm going to click on the scale box and I can now alter the starting point on my scale. I'm going to change it from 1900 to, oops, a daisy, let's give that another go. I'll go in the other way, I'm not quite sure what happened there. So axis options once again, I'm going to change that to 1920 and when I do so, you'll see I've got a lovely scale there on my axis.